If you recall, we saw that in the previous video, positive displacement compressors include reciprocating, sliding vanes, screw, and rotary lobe compressors. The following figure shows a typical process reciprocating compressor. Reciprocating compressors are generally used for the following applications. Low flow, high pressure, low and varying molecular weight. This type of compressors increases the pressure of a gas by acting on a fixed volume in a confined space. The internal construction of a typical reciprocating compressor cylinder is seen here. You can see the piston and the valves. As the piston moves from left to right, a constant volume of gas will be displaced. The discharge pressure developed will be the pressure at the discharge flange caused by the process pressure and system resistance. In other words, the gas in the cylinder will not exit until the pressure developed in the cylinder is greater than the pressure at the compressor discharge flange. Now, take a look at the simplified cut section. Any reciprocating compressor is made of two parts, the pneumatic ends and the dynamic portion. The compression of the gas is carried out in the pneumatic end where the piston acts on the gas. The dynamic portion is responsible for transmitting the mechanical motion to the piston. It includes the crankshaft, the connecting rod, and the crosshead. Other important components or element of a reciprocating compressor are the piston rod and the distance piece. If you feel like you want to know more about reciprocating compressors, then be aware that we do provide a comprehensive course covering the principle of operation, design and maintenance guidelines for these special rotating equipment. For now, let's have a closer look at one of the pneumatic ends. This pneumatic end comprises of the cylinder, the cylinder lining, the section valves, the discharge valves and the staffing box with the rod packings. Let's now observe this compressor working. Every compressor is designed on the principle of volume flow. Since compressor performance must consider gas velocity, actual flow is always used for design. The actual flow is referred to in this course as ACFM for actual cubic feet per minute and so is expressed in cubic feet per minute or cubic meter per hour. The volume flow changes directly with temperature and inversely with pressure. Standard volume and mass flow are used to describe process conditions. Standard volume is referred to in this course as SCFM and is measured in standard cubic feet per minute or normal cubic meter per hour. If there is not any condensate formed within a compressor section, the standard and mass flow through a compressor remains unchanged. The mass flow can be calculated using the following formula. It is equal to the actual volume flow times the density of the gas. Now, to demonstrate the characteristics of a positive displacement compressor, let's observe the simplified process scheme including a positive displacement compressor. The red circles that you can see here represent pressure gauges. For this example, let's consider the following set of initial pressures. The section of the compressor is set at 20 PSI. The pressure downstream the valve is at 110 PSI. The pressure of the discharge vessel is at 100 PSI and the pressure upstream of the valve is set at 135 PSI. And finally, the discharge pressure of the compressor is at 140 
PSI. Please note here that all these pressures are relative pressures and not absolute pressures. As seen in this example, these gauge pressures steadily decrease from the discharge of the compressor to the discharge vessel. At the initial conditions noted here, let's now assume that the compressor flow is 500 ACFM for actual cubic feet per minute and that the brake horsepower is 250 bhp. The compression ratio based on the suction and discharge pressure is calculated this way. So it is the discharge pressure expressed in absolute pressure divided by the suction pressure of the compressor also expressed in absolute pressure. So here, since all the readings are expressed in gauge pressure, then we need to convert them to absolute pressure. The discharge pressure is equal to 140 PSI plus 14.7 to convert it into absolute pressure. The suction pressure is 20 PSI plus 14.7 to convert it into absolute pressure. So the compression ratio in our case here is 4.45. Let's now plot the actual cubic feet per minute versus pressure ratio and the actual cubic feet per minute versus bhp. In this example, the actual cubic feet per minute is 500 and the pressure ratio is 4.45. So here you have your first operating point. And for BHP, we have 500 ACFM as flow and 250 brake horsepower. Now let's assume that the control valve in the discharge process system is slightly closed. With this action, the pressure upstream of the control valve increases to 175 PSI and the discharge pressure of the compressor increases to 108 PSI. The horsepower also increases to 300 bhp. In your opinion, what has happened to the ACFM or the actual flow in this case? Let's plot the new pressure ratio and brake horsepower to figure it out. First, we calculate the new pressure ratio. Recall that it is equal to the discharge pressure of the compressor divided by its suction pressure, and both pressures must be expressed in absolute pressure. So here, the new ratio is equal to 180 PSI gauge pressure plus 14.7 to convert it to absolute pressure, divided by the suction pressure of the compressor, which is in change in our case here, and equal to 20 PSI gauge pressure, so plus 14.7 to convert it into absolute pressure. And the new ratio is equal to 5.6. Now let's plot these two points on the two graphs. The new pressure ratio as a function of the flow and the new BHP or brake horsepower as a function of the actual flow. Notice here that both pressure ratio and brake horsepower curves are essentially a vertical line. Observing these plots, the characteristics of any positive compressor can be defined as follows. Positive displacement compressors deliver a constant volume, have a variable head capacity, and are not self-limiting. Not self-limiting means that the pressure ratio or head and the brake horsepower will continue to rise until the case pressure is exceeded or the driver maximum horsepower is exceeded. To limit these parameters, a pressure relief valve is always required in a system incorporating any type of positive displacement compressor.